Hi everyone! If you're new here, I'm Alan with Earth Glow, and this channel is all about sharing the joy of candle making. So today's video is, I think, my part three, I want to say, of my Makesy unboxing um, of the fragrances that I purchased in their 99 cent sale. So in today's video, I'm going to be smelling these fragrances out of the bottle, giving you my out of the bottle first impressions of these oils. And um, if you are new here, this channel is all about sharing the joy of candle making. Fragrance videos um, are my absolute favorite to film. But anyways, let's get right into today's video and I hope that you enjoy. So I always put out the disclaimer with these fragrance videos that these are just gonna be my out of the bottle first impressions. So I do always recommend that you do your own testing um, because fragrance is very subjective and my opinion is just that. It's just my opinion. Um, but anyways, I'm so excited. I'm gonna show you all what we're gonna hopefully be able to get through in this video, all these scents here. Um, I could not pass these up in the 99 cent sale. Um, and someone actually had suggested that I, rather than trying to take the stopper out of each of these, just take the fragrance and put a little drop. You know, I'm gonna grab a paper towel here. Um, they just recommended that I take a little drop of the fragrance and put it onto the strip without actually, I don't know if I'm in frame at all here, um, but without actually taking the fragrance because they put these little stoppers on the bottles. Um, so I'm gonna try this and just see. So I'm just gonna see, there we go. I think this is gonna be much easier because what tends to happen with these bottles is once you pull the stopper out, they tend to start leaking at least in my experience, and some other folks um, told me that that was also their experience too. Um, but this first one is Egyptian, um, Egyptian linen and lavender buds. And also with my fragrance videos, um, I'm very, um, <laughs> I don't wanna say crudely honest, but um, I like to give you my opinions, um, my out of the bottle first impressions. So I never smell these until I'm actually on camera. And I like to share my honest opinions um, for better or for worse. Um, but yeah, so this first one is called Egyptian Linen and Lavender Buds. Mmm, this is just like the name. Um, I think that they named it perfectly. Um, with it being called Egyptian Linen and Lavender Buds, this reminds me of if you were to take like um, Egyptian Amber by Candle Science and say you blended that one with like a clean cotton type of a scent, but took out some of the powder and replaced it with lavender. Um, this is a beautiful combination of a spa-like scent coupled with something that's more clean and something that is, um, yeah, it's like amber and linen and lavender all in one fragrance. Um, the hot throw, Oh my God, the hot throw. <laughs> the out of the bottle throw on the blotter strip um, is very strong. So I, this one so far, I really, really like. Um, so I don't really need anything like this in my line. So I may or may not actually um, test that one, but I will just put it up on here right now on this platter. I don't know if you can see back here. Um, these are some of the oils that I really like that I'm gonna put up there. Um, and this next one here is called Coffee, Bean, and Cacao. I believe cacao is um, a type of something that chocolate is made from, and I, I wanna say it's it's not actually sweet. I think I have organic cacao nibs that I add to like my frozen yogurt and stuff. Um, oh my gosh, okay, I can smell this one from here, and it's not, um, not good. Hmm, okay. Actually, it is better up close. I was getting a little bit worried. I always have this thing with chocolate fragrances. They remind me of how my dog's ear wax used to smell when I was little. I had to clean out my golden retriever's ears uh, from time to time. But this is, okay, it's like 15% dog's ear wax, 85% coffee bean and cacao. Um, it's really prominent out of the bottle and it's definitely more of a sweeter type of a fragrance. If you are looking for like a straight, like, 
espresso type of a scent, I would recommend Espresso by Brambleberry. That is my number one coffee fragrance that I love. Um, and I also do like that one in cold process soap. It does accelerate trace moderately, but I mean, if you know how to work with it, it's a great fragrance and it's really not that hard to work with. But yeah, um, this one's definitely sweeter. This, um, it doesn't really have hazelnut. It's definitely like a coffee and cacao, but it does have like some cream elements and some sugar elements to it. Um, I don't think this one's for me, but I am impressed with how strong this one is out of the bottle. And I can definitely see a lot of people liking this fragrance um, if you are into those kind of sweeter coffee type chocolate scents. Um, coffee, coffee House by Candle Science is a coffee scent that I use in my um, artisan collection. And that one I sell as my Uncommon Grounds candle. And it's definitely more of a bitter type of, well, not really bitter, but it's it doesn't have the sweetness to it that this scent has. Um, so yeah, coffee bean and cacao, definitely gonna be more along the lines of a coffee with a lot of cream and sweetener to it and cacao. All right, next up, let's take a look at this tiara petals and spiced sandalwood. Um, this sounds like it's gonna be really up my alley. Um, and let me grab another one of my strips here. I can also smell this fragrance um, from quite a distance and this one is smelling really good so far. Just gonna put a few drops. It's so much easier to do this and just put down a little paper towel than it is to pull those stoppers out each time. Um, but anyways, I'm hoping that this one is gonna be some sort of an elevated sandalwood coupled with the um, kind of floral note, but not too like heady of a floral. I kind of have a thing where I'm just not into florals that are too like up in the stratosphere. And okay, this one is good out of the bottle. Like it's definitely, Hmm. Yeah, it it doesn't, it's, it strikes me as something that I have smelled before and I can't put a finger on what that is. I wanna say it reminds me of something I've smelled by Nature's Garden and it's beautiful, but it's just, um, I mean, I'm getting the sandalwood. I'm getting a light spice note to this. Um, it, it kind of reminds me of like some cardamom fragrances that I've smelled before. Um, and yeah, it's just, to me personally, not anything special. All right, next up, let's take a look at this raw cinnamon and clove. And one of these cinnamon fragrances, a lot of you have been talking about from Make C, and I don't know if it was this one or the cinnamon apple fragrance, um, but I generally am not into too much cinnamon myself, but I do have a lot of clients who like cinnamon. It is a popular note. It can be kind of polarizing in my experience, but um, yeah, so this is raw cinnamon and clove. So I expect that this is gonna be very spice heavy. And yeah. Okay, so this reminds me of, um, if you've tried clove by Stone Candles, these are almost, oh my God, I just whacked myself in the face with a blotter strip. Um, but yeah, this really reminds me of Clove by Stone Candles. Um, it's definitely more of an upscale smelling cinnamon scent and you get more clove to this one, in my opinion, than cinnamon. And um, it would make a very nice blender, I would say. Next up, let's take a look at this Lavender and Ylang. And I'm guessing they mean like Ylang Ylang essential oil, um, which is definitely, oh my God, this cap is on really tight. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to, okay, I just got it. One of these fragrances I actually had to take downstairs and, and get pliers um, to get it to open. And okay, so this one, um, but yeah, what I was saying is Ylang Ylang essential oil is definitely more of a heady type of a floral in my opinion. It's, it's um, a fragrance note that I would say it's very polarizing. Um, you really need to like florals to really appreciate it. And yeah, so this one is coupled with lavender and I'm expecting that this is gonna be kind of more of an aromatherapy spa-like type of a scent. And yes, this is really gorgeous. Um, I'm getting more of like a lavadin type of a note than I am lavender. Um, it's definitely more of a rich base like resonant lavender type of a scent. Very prominent out of the bottle. Um, this is really beautiful. Um, this doesn't smell like anything that I can 
put a finger on that I have smelled exactly like before. And I definitely think that this one is a nice balance of lavender with ylang ylang. And definitely I think the ylang on the bottle of this one, um, it, it does seem to be reminiscent of that essential oil. And like with a lot of Mixies fragrances, I do get a strong essential oil component to this one, but it does seem very inspired to me. I'm definitely getting that with the French lavender. And the scent, I'm definitely gonna be probably making into some melts um, if I'm able to get a chance to do that. All right, next up, let's take a look at this. Should we do this vanilla, santal, and shea butter? Um, so I love shea butter. Shea butter is one of my ingredients that I use in like all of the cold process soaps that I make. Um, I also use it, it is one of the featured ingredients in my chamomile kiss body butter that I usually bring into my shop in the winter time because it does melt a little bit in the summer months and I choose not to use chemical stabilizers in that um, to keep it from, from melting. Um, but yeah, so shea butter. Unrefined shea butter definitely has an aroma to it that is very characteristic and unique to that butter. Um, it's kind of slightly nutty. It's it's a very base heavy um, butter nutty type of a note. Almost reminds me of like what an acorn, what I imagine an acorn maybe smelling like. Um, but this one is supposed to be coupled with vanilla santal. Now santal is a note if you've ever smelled um, kind of a woody tropical like fragrance um, or if you're bougie and have tried Le Labo's Santal 33 that is like in my opinion the definition of Santal but and by the way Stone Candles has a spot on dupe for that fragrance but yeah so this sounds like it's going to be a really good combination oh I do also use I love the Shea Butter fragrance by Candle Science they have one that's called Mahogany Shea I believe and I will put the correct name up on the screen if that was not it but it is a really really beautiful um clean oh my gosh I'm smelling something really good <laughs> um but yeah the Mahogany Shea from Candle Science is a beautiful really clean um Shea type of a fragrance and I do blend that one with three other fragrances I believe I blend it with amber and driftwood as well as candle science sandalwood and tonka and oud and it is my london fog candle in my winter wonderland collection um but yeah i'm really excited to smell this vanilla santal and shea butter by makesy and wow 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 this is really good, but it is coming off lighter out of the bottle. So I'm gonna put a little bit more here on my strip. Um, I'm getting definitely the sh uh, the Santal and the Shea, but it's like a perfect marriage of Santal and Shea. Um, wow, this smells like something that West Elm would be featuring. Um, it's, it's maybe even more bougie smelling to me than West Elm. Um, this is a really gorgeous, it's like a vanilla bean. It's not a sweet vanilla or a very vanilla. It's definitely more like a vanilla bean. And you do get the santal and the shea butter, but you don't get that kind of muddy quality to the shea butter. It's more of a clean shea butter type of a scent. And this might be one of my favorite oils that I have smelled by this company. And I am definitely gonna be making this into something, probably wax melts just to test in my beeswax soy and cocoa cream recipe, how this fragrance will throw in a melt. And I do find that these little 10 milliliter bottles are the perfect size to use for wax melts, um, for a single melt, I should say. This next one here is honey and bourbon. And I really love bourbon fragrances. Some of my favorites are Bowties and Bourbon by Aztec. I also love one that Michael Aponte had recommended by Aztec um, that I will put the name up on the screen. It is a bourbon fragrance. Um, it's a very seductive kind of nighttime. Actually, it's not by Aztec, it's by The Flaming Candle. Um, but Michael Aponte from Candle Romance recommended this scent to me and it's one of my favorite bourbons. I don't know that it beats out Bowties and Bourbon by Aztec, but it's definitely up there. Um, and a lot of people have the misconception that bourbon in a fragrance smells like alcohol. It definitely doesn't, in my opinion, smell like alcohol. If you have smelled something that just seems to have this cohesive undertone that is slightly seductive and sensual, it very likely may have bourbon in it. Um, even some gourmand fragrances, like take Candle Science's, um, what is it called? It's their brandied pear. Um, that is like a, 
it has bourbon brandy notes like that caramelized alcoholic component to it and it, it in my opinion does not smell anything like alcohol it's just like a caramelized rich decadence to it and that is not exclusive to gourmand fragrances um, in any way that's that's a note that is very widely used within the perfume industry um, but this one is coupled with honey and tobacco is another note like that that can just be so sensual and just absolutely luxurious and gorgeous. I don't know if you all can hear, but there's like sirens going on outside. There were so many police in town today. I don't know what they were all doing, but um, maybe someone's on the run. I really don't know. Um, but anyways, let's check out this Honey and Bourbon by Makesy and see what it's gonna do for us. Mm. Yeah, okay, this is good. Like it's definitely honey and bourbon. I do also pick up some tobacco in this fragrance. Um, it does have a strong powder component and something else in this one that is like, definitely like a sandalwood, kind of a base rich fragrance. Um, maybe there's a little bit of tonka to this one, maybe a hint of oud, um, but it does not strike me, in my opinion, as anything that unusual. Um, it has a lot of cedar to it as well. Um, so yeah, I'm not really impressed by honey and bourbon. It is pretty prominent though, out of the bottle. Okay, next up, let's take a look at this Bluebells and Cucumber. Now this fragrance really intrigued me online by the name of it, and I'm excited to see what this one is gonna be. I've been looking for a good cucumber fragrance. I had tried um, Cucumber Water and Melon by Candle Science. It was in my spa collection as my floating lotus candle. And it did sell for me, but definitely not too well. Like if, if to use Jeff Stanley's analogy, if you were to take that one to a farmer's market, you might sell four out of 10. Whereas um, I'm looking for like a cucumber and melon, kind of like Bath and Body Works, where it is just a showstopper fragrance and one that I can use and maybe a facial cold process soap. And so I have also tried the Fresh Picked Cucumber by Candle Science and that one definitely smells like a vine ripened cucumber. I think they may have discontinued that scent actually, which is kind of sad to me. Um, I mean, it's probably just my Taurus nature coming out. I, I sort of love fragrances that are like sticking my head into an herb garden. Um, but anyways, I'm gonna just get a little bit of this one. This is the Bluebells and Cucumber Leaf by Makesy. Mmm. Okay, this does lean more on the perfume type side. Um, so, and it is coming off, in my opinion, lighter than I would like out of the bottle. Now, again, that's not an indication necessarily as to how a fragrance is going to perform in your wax or in your application. But the thing is, is they are the most concentrated out of the bottle. And this one to me is coming off pretty light. And yeah, I'm definitely getting the bluebell, like the floral note to this one. And I am also getting a cucumber leaf. I do really like this fragrance. I think that it's very well done and inspired. I am just wishing that this one were a little bit stronger out of the bottle and maybe a little bit more of like a, um, a little bit less of a floral component and a little bit more on the cucumber. I would say this one is probably like 60, 40, like 60% cucumber, 40% bluebell, um, but it's a beautiful fragrance. Oh my gosh, I don't think I'm ever gonna be able to get through all these fragrances. I literally have, well, I don't know that I can show you all, but I have three more videos from Makesy planned with these oils and I'm sorry if any of you are getting bored. I just felt like since I bought all these oils, I might as well share them with everyone on camera. So if you are getting bored of my fragrance hauls from Makesy, just let me know and if enough of you don't like me doing these hauls, I will stop. Um, but I definitely, like fragrance is like the sparkle of candle making to me. It is my absolute passion. As I've mentioned to a lot of you before, I grew up in the Bath and Body Works and Yankee Candle stores and I just adore fragrance. Um, it's always been a big part of my life with my mom and her passion for candles, um, Yankee Candles growing up. Um, but anyways, I hope I'm not boring you all too much because I'm definitely having a lot of fun doing this. Uh, but this next one is Pecan Martini and Muscovado Sugar. And this name is very intriguing. I love everything about Maxie's branding. So, and wow, I can definitely smell something out of the bottle here. Oh, but I forgot to mention too, 
that these hauls from Mixi, I am kind of holding to a really, really high standard because a lot of these fragrances are gonna be double, if not triple or even quadruple of a lot of companies. So they are marketing these along the lines of more like stone candles. Well, stone candles actually has a really good candle makers wholesale discount, um, but more along the lines of 16, 17, um, Brambleberry, uh, they're definitely a more luxury price point. So I'm expecting um, to absolutely love the fragrance or I would not um, purchase it for the price point. But yeah, this next one is called Pecan Martini and Muscovado Sugar and let's see what it's gonna do for us. Hmm, okay, this definitely smells like some of their maple chai and sweet cream, but this one's definitely more sweet. I would prefer out of the bottle and um, I did make the maple chai and sweet cream into wax melts um, and it, it was sweeter in the melts than it was out of the bottle. So this one's definitely sweeter out of the bottle, but along the, <laughs> but along the same lines of the maple chai and sweet cream. And I am just not too much of a fan of this. Um, it's just too sweet for me personally. Okay, next let's take a look at this apple rind and cinnamon. And I think this was the scent that some of you were telling me about, like, oh, Alan, you need to try this out, this apple and cinnamon from Macy. There's just a lot of people that are really passionate about this scent. Um, my apple cinnamon of choice is gonna be the Apple Harvest by Candle Science because I am not into too much cinnamon. Um, I know the Flaming Candle does make a pretty similar one as well. Um, but yeah, I, I, cinnamon very easily overpowers things and I am just kind of sensitive to that. I don't know if any of you are like me as well. I, I do prefer uh, spice notes like cardamom, even clove, but cinnamon is just one that I'm more sensitive to. So apple rind and cinnamon. And wow. Okay, so this fragrance, ladies and gentlemen, right here, if you are like me and you are not too into the cinnamons, uh, this is one that I would recommend checking out because I get a very strong Macintosh apple note to this, but there is a slight amount of cinnamon and a very, very slight, like almost a shockingly slight amount of cinnamon to this fragrance um, that's kind of in the backdrop. But if they were to just call this Macintosh apple or apple harvest, um, it's more like an apple harvest type of a scent. It's not like a straight Macintosh apple. Um, but really beautiful and definitely for someone who is not too into the uh, cinnamon or the spice notes because they do not overpower this one at all. Again, I would recommend it being probably, or I would I would say that it is probably 85% apple and 15% um, cinnamon. Okay, next up, let's take a look at this plum, blossom, and cacao. Now, Macy seems to do a lot with cacao, which I mean, I can understand and appreciate because it's kind of like um, Nature's Garden, how they have that one fragrance that's called, um, it's called Amber and Chocolate, I believe. And it smells to me personally, like it's called Dark Chocolate Amber. And it smells to me personally like a, um, seductive type of a chocolate fragrance. And that is, or a seductive type of an amber fragrance, I should say. You don't really get the chocolate, but it's in the background. And if they tell you it's in there, you kind of know that kind of a thing. But chocolate, like cacao, um, definitely adds that quality. So I just find it interesting that Macy does so much with cacao, it seems like. Um, but anyways, let's take a look at this plum in cacao and see what it's gonna do for us. And okay, this reminds me of something I have smelled before and I'm trying to put a finger on what it is. It's very prominent out of the bottle. Um, it's a fragrance that I have smelled before. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna remember it probably after this video. I have no idea. But oh my God, I just whacked myself in the face with the strip. But yeah, this is almost reminiscent of, it has a lot of powder to it. If you're not into powder, I would stay away from this one, at least out of the bottle, picking up a very strong powdery note. Um, I am getting plum to this, but it's more of a dark amber and plum or a more seductive plum, not like cashmere plum. I would also consider that a more seductive plum, but that's more of like a, a fresh cashmere-like seductive plum. This is more of a, a, a golden brown seductive plum, almost like a black plum. Um, I cannot put a finger on what this smells like, but it definitely smells like something that I have 
smelled many times. Actually, it may be a frankincense and myrrh fragrance by Zoom, which uh, if any of you are familiar, Z-U-M is the company. Um, okay, I'm gonna have to see if I can find that fragrance. Um, I have no idea where it is. I have one of their candles. Um, but yeah, this is beautiful. Um, definitely taking me by surprise and I will look forward to playing more with this scent. All right, next up, let's take a look at this fig leaf and galbanum. And the label is coming off of here a little bit. There was some fragrances in the bottle or in the bag that were kind of leaking. And I think this may have been one of them. Um, so I am familiar with a lot of fig fragrances. I love um, cardamom and fig by Candles and Supplies. I love Fig Tree by Candle Science. That is my Barcelona candle in my Wanderlust collection. Absolutely a hit for me. Um, I also love Fig Figuier by Stone Candles. I use that one in a 50-50 with Cassis by Stone Candles and it is my Antalya candle in my Wanderlust collection. But I can actually smell this galbanum and fig from here. And this, I can tell you right away is almost identical to Figuier by Stone Candles. Like, it's like a spot on, like earthy, almost get some of the dirt um, with the fig. It is not a fig fruit type of a scent. It is more of a, um, well, I guess you could say it's fruity, but it's earthy. It's like an earthy, very hearty type of a fig. And you do get a lot of base notes to this one. There's definitely a lot of sandalwood, cedarwood, maybe a hint of patchouli in there. Um, but not vanilla. It's it's more of a woody, earthy fig. So we've got fr uh, three more fragrances to go here. Uh, oh, this pomelo and apricot rosé. I'm gonna save that one for last because I'm really excited about that one. Um, okay, let's do this natural Arabian jasmine and bays flowers, bays roses. Okay, I was gonna say, bays are, um, it's a French word for berries, I believe. I don't know French, but I am familiar with the fragrance oil from Stone Candles called bays, and that is my Paris candle in my Wanderlust collection. Um, but yeah, I am excited to smell this one, and I'm curious what Arabian jasmine um, smells like. I am familiar with jasmine. Um, it is a beautiful kind of clean uh, floral. It's kind of a floral note that appeals to those who don't really like a lot of the more heady florals like ylang ylang or like neroli. Well, that's not really a floral, but kind of. Um, so anyways, um, natural Arabian jasmine and bays roses. Let's see what it's gonna do for us. Oh, okay. This to me, I have to say it, it smells like a luxury toilet bowl cleaner to me personally. I'm sorry if that's offensive. I have to have transparency. When it's going through my head, I have to say it on this channel. Uh, hard pass for me on natural Arabian jasmine and bay's roses. It, it's, it's like if you took, um, High Tide by Candle Science, which I actually think also smells like a luxury toilet bowl cleaner. It's just that it's 20 some dollars for a 16 ounce bottle as opposed to, I don't know what this one costs by Megsy. Um, but uh, I do sell that one as my bidet candle. Don't ask. Um, <laughs> it's very popular uh, among my clients. But yeah, this one is a hard pass for me. Okay, next up, let's take a look at Orange Rind and Clove. And this is another one that I'm really excited to try because I love orange. I think orange goes so well with clove. If you've ever smelled Christmas Hearth by Candle Science, that is the epitome of orange with clove. But that one also does have some pine notes to it in the background as well. Another good example is if you've ever smelled Winter by Bath and Body Works, um, that fragrance is, well, actually very similar to Christmas Hearth, but that one is a little bit more balanced with the um, well, I would say with the pine notes, but it, it's kind of more of a 33.3, 33.3, 33 33.3 of the pine, the clove, and the orange. Um, whereas the other one that I was mentioning, um, the Christmas Hearth by Candle Science, is more of the orange and the clove. Now, I'm expecting this fragrance from Makesy to have more of an essential oil component to it um, with the orange, since a lot of their fragrances are like that. I'm also very familiar with just mixing orange and essential oil 
form with clove in essential oil form. Um, that was actually one of my very first candles that I ever made with beeswax, um, mixing those two notes together. So I am interested how this orange rind in clove is gonna do for us. And yeah. Okay, so this definitely is more essential oil-like, um, but it is more inspired than just the straight essential oils, in my opinion. Um, no offense to essential oils, but sometimes by themselves, they can have more of a medicinal type of a quality. And with these fragrance oils, I'm looking for everything that I love about essential oils, but elevated and inspired in an artistic way. Um, and I would say that this is definitely that. I'm gonna put a little more on the strip it is a little bit light, which is surprising to me because citruses are usually very prominent out of the bottle. Um, and I am getting, I would say, about a 50-50 of the orange and the clove. This is a fragrance that definitely strikes me as a more rustic type of a scent or something that you would have around the holidays. I definitely like it more than Christmas Hearth by Candle Science. I think that that fragrance, even though it's very popular, to me personally, it is more of a kind of um, artificial, almost candy-like, overly powdery type of an orange scent um, with clove. So I definitely pr do prefer this one by Macy and I may make this one into a wax melt. I am kind of apprehensive, um, like I usually don't use um, orange in, in my cold process soaps just because, um, well, uh, fragrance oil is fine, but if you, well, you always need to check the IFRA category nine, obviously, but if you use too much of um, anything that has spice notes and usually the IFRA certificate will tell you um, for category 9 what the max is. Um, it can be just more irritating to skin in general. Um, but anyways, okay, let's take a look at this last one, pomelo and apricot rosé. Now rosé I think is um, it's a type of like a drink. Now I'm not really into alcoholic drinks um, myself but I think I have tried rosé and I want to say it's kind of like a wine. Um, please correct me if I'm wrong because I'm not confident in that at all, but um, So I'm expecting something kind of like um, Sort of like a luxury type of a drink that maybe is a little bit fruity Maybe a little bit sweet and sugary. So let's take a look and see what this pomelo and apricot rosé is gonna do for us And yeah, okay, so what this reminds me of is White Grapefruit and Acai by Stone Candles. This is very sweet. This reminds me of a kid's product by Bath & Body Works, but I would say that this is also an inspired type of a scent. Like I think it's a very well done cohesive fragrance, but it is striking me more as like an artificial kind of sweet, um, not really like a candy. It's definitely, I, I think this would smell very good in soaps um, actually, and I may play around with it. Um, in cold process soap, there's not really enough in this bottle to, to, to do very much of that when you're making cold process. Um, but yeah, this reminds me of White Grapefruit Acai by Stone Candles. Um, it definitely has like a black currant note to it, a kind of cranberry note to it, the pomelo. Definitely an alcoholic note, but it doesn't smell like alcohol. It's more of a sweet drink type of a note. And yeah, it's not far from what I would get in a spray foam can as a kid at Bath & Body Works. But anyways, that is all for this video. And I do think my favorite fragrance definitely from this video was the Vanilla Santal and Shea Butter. I'm really excited to try this scent. I have to smell it again. Oh my God, it's so good. Like it's so good. This might become part of my London Fog candle because I just adore it. Um, but anyways, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment if you have tried any of these fragrances or which oils from Maxi you enjoy. I did notice that they have this new thing now that is called Luxury for Less and um, I am excited that they're, you know, really, you know, listening to their customers. I know they did raise a lot of prices recently, but it sounds like, you know, with that line, they are really listening to us and um, bringing the prices down on some things. Um, but anyways, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to tap the notification bell so that you don't miss any updates from me. And I'm sending everyone peace, love, and light. And I'm wishing all of you happy candle making.